I think it's I think it's important for everybody to understand the challenges that we're facing out here to be able to raise raise the amount of food that the world needs. Without those technologies, um, you're probably looking at, at half the world starving to death. Welcome to Planning Pit Stops with Massey Ferguson. My name is Forrest Francis, Marketing Manager for Massey Ferguson Planners. My name is Jason Lee and I'm an agronomist. Throughout this series, we're going to meet with a variety of growers, partners that support them, and also learn about different planter technologies that help farmers improve their operation. I guess, Jason, why is planting season so important? Yeah, that's a great question, Forrest. So the planting season is so important because it really sets the stage for the rest of the year, right? The way we put those seeds in the ground really uh, dictates that yield potential then throughout the season. So we only have one chance to get it right, uh, so we need to make sure that we're doing the best job possible. So that's why it's so important. So we're excited that you're here, and we're about to kick off uh, this journey with our first farmer in northern Kansas. My name is Aaron Gasper. Um, I farm here in north central Kansas in Osborne County. I uh, farm with my dad, Kenny. And my dad and I, we've always ran, you know, we've always ran gleaner combines. That's kind of how we got started with Agco. Uh, my dad had a few Alice Chalmers tractors back in the day. Uh, one of them we actually still feed cows with every day. It's a 70, 80 Alice Chalmers, so kind of an old antique tractor, but it feeds the cows every day. At some point in my life, uh, I'd like to be able to come out here and do this full time. You know, I've been, uh, ever since I got out of college, I've always had a job, and my dad and I have kind of been, he's full time, and I've kind of been part time. So, you know, one of my goals, I guess, for the farm is to keep growing it a little bit every year and make it a, 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 an operation that, that both of us can, can live comfortably off, and I think we're we're on the right path. Primarily farm corn, wheat, soybeans, and milo. We're running an 8732 tractor, 8732 Massey tractor, along with the Massey Ferguson VF1630, 16 row planter. Um, set up on 30 inch spacing, uh, obviously got central fill. Uh, fertilizer, running an infero uh, liquid fertilizer. We're pretty much 100% no-till. Um, you know, every once in a while, if we need to take on a new piece of ground or, or have cattle run hard on something, we'll. We'll work some ground if necessary, but uh, we've been doing no-till for, for a long time and uh, seems to work well for us. The last couple of years, we planted in some pretty terrible conditions and uh, you know, with the lack of moisture and, and all the heat we've seen. And this planter with, uh, I think Delta Force has made a huge difference, um, being able to get that planter in the ground and, and keep it in the ground uniformly. Um, that's made a big difference. One of the biggest changes that we've seen over the last couple of years for us here is that planting window is moving back. Um, we are actually pushing our planting window further out into May, beginning of June, and there's a lot of people around here that are doing that. The problem with that is, you know, you're running the risk of you're not being able to get that crop in the ground in a timely manner. And so we're not starting in the middle of April and planting for a month and a half. We really don't have that much time. So, you know, when we get to the field, we go and we've got to get a lot of stuff done in a, in a fairly short amount of time. And we try to push that, push that envelope and push that planting window as late as we can to try to optimize yields in the fall. And at the same time, you know, when we go, we've got to go and, 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 be, and be efficient with that. I've had a flat tire and a blown hydraulic hose. Uh, knock on wood, that's the only repairs we've made in the last, um, over the last two planting seasons uh, at running it. So I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the performance. I'm happy with uh, how well it's held up and has kept me going in the field almost a sense of relief and you get to the field and take off and, and everything works. It's uh, <laughs> that's, that's the best part about it, just making sure everything rolls like it's supposed to and you can get a little tractor time and enjoy farming a little bit. If I was talking to somebody that, that wasn't really familiar with agriculture and wanted to know about what we did, um, I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, for me, you know, I, I think there's so much misinformation out there about where your food comes from, and, and how it's grown. And I, I think everybody needs to, needs to understand that, you know, a farmer's perspective is we're out here, uh, we know it's our responsibility to, uh, to feed the world, uh, but it's also um, important for us to, to have a, uh, a sustainable operation from a profitability standpoint so that we can stay in business. You know, we've got certain technologies on our spraying equipment that, that allows us to, to use less pesticides and, and chemicals and things like that. But without those technologies, um, you're probably looking at, at half the world starving to death. We're trying to be respectful and trying to raise crops and, and be good stewards, 
uh, of the land and, and raise healthy food. I think all of those technologies that, that kind of get ostracized sometimes are necessary to feed a growing world. Now that we wrapped up with our grower here in Kansas, I want to give you a brief overview of Massey Freedom Planners, common terminology, and a variety of other systems and components that you'll find on many different planners. In general, there are multiple planner types and designs and toolbars. The one behind me is a front fold toolbar, it's very common. The wings on the planner fold frontward. There's also mounted ones that will mount on, say, a tractor's three-point hitch. There's also rigid toolbars that, that don't move, they're just a solid rigid bar. Another key thing you'll hear a lot about planners is row spacing. And so when you see row spacing, that's the space between the center of a row unit to the next row unit. And so you'll hear things like 16 R30 or 16 row 30. When you hear that, that means that planter is 16 rows, 16 row units, and they're spaced at 30 inches apart. When it comes to where seed is kept in place, historically speaking, you know, old seed were in boxes on, on individual row units, row unit hoppers, they'll call them, and, and usually it's a bushel or two, and there'll be a big box. But more and more planters are moving to central fill systems, CFS or uh, CCS, uh, commodity uh, or central commodity system, some terminology you might hear. And so that's what these big tanks in the center are. It allows a farmer to to load at a single point and load higher capacity amount of seed on a planter. And then usually the seed is then delivered to the row units, the mini hoppers they have here, through um, a, a seed tube hoses and a big blower. And so the blower is, again, in essence, just pushing a lot of air. The seeds um, are pushed then into these tubes and delivered in these white tubes to, to the little mini hoppers on each row unit. These most planters have a vac, vac system. And so there's a vacuum, just like the one you might have at home that is sucking the seeds from the mini hopper onto a plate in the meter. There's a disc with a bunch of little holes in that. And again, the vacuum is sucking the seed to that disc. Disc rotates, each seed will drop, drop off the disc down um, a seed tube. So there's a little seed tube in between the middle of the row unit and that's what's dropping into the actual furrow. We come over here to see a little bit more of the row unit in more detail. So some terminology you'll see. So again, your red item, or this is the big toolbar you'll see. Row units are then connected to a toolbar through parallel links or parallel arms you'll hear. So when you look at the row unit here, I'll just kind of go through the major, major components. So starting on the front is called your residue manager or row cleaner, kind of the two biggest terminologies. But in general, they're usually two wheels that are spinning. And the two big things they're trying to do is again, make the row unit have a smoother ride. So you're kind of creating a nice smooth pathway for the row unit and you're trying to remove that residue. So you don't, want, you don't want residue or old growth material right next to your seed because that will prevent the seed from reaching its, its ultimate potential. So again, residue managers are not uh, tillage tools. They're, again, they're more just to create a nice clean path. I guess a big component's a gauge wheel. And again, there are many different gauge wheels. These are solid gauge wheels. You kind of see solid here. There's also ones that are spoked, so they'll have just spokes and a lot of uh, open area. But um, and in essence, those are kind of the, the, uh, what carries the weight of the row unit. Uh, that's what maintains the depth too. It's, this depth handle is what is changing how far the gauge wheel moves up. I think what's cool about an Agco row unit is you can recalibrate that depth and so that your set depth is your planted depth. And what's really creating the furrow is their opener disc. That's what these big round thin pieces of metal are. And again, those are what's, uh, there's two of them kind of put together in a V and it's kind of creating the C trench or furrow that the seed falls into. This one doesn't have wheels and we'll show that in a minute, but a closing system again is after the furrow is created, after the seed drops into the furrow, and these are pinching, kind of closing, closing that furrow up and so that um, the seed is, has the right seed to soil contact and so it you know, obviously germinates and, and uh, uh, grows. One thing again, what's cool about Agco planters is uh, whether it's Fent or Massey Ferguson, is that you're able to kind of <coughs> pick some closing systems, gauge wheels and, and residue systems that you'd want, or we allow you to not pick those. So again, it gives the dealer and farm a lot of flexibility for what they need. We already talked a little bit about the meter, but the other biggest and, and most important component on the whole row unit is the meter. And again, this is what is metering the seed, right? Depending on how many seeds you want to uh, plant, how fast, this is what's controlling all of that. So singulation is, is a key term you'll hear. So I talked about kind of the seed disc. So again, depending, um, the brand of planter, they'll look a little differently. But in essence, you have a disc, a bunch of holes into it, and that vacuum that we talked about earlier is sucking seed from the mini hopper onto each hole. Again, you want one seed per hole, and then this will rotate and a seed, seed will drop down the, the seed tube. For precision, these are precision uh, planting V-set meters, and um, for each different kind of crop, there's a, usually a different disc and some other components, but again, makes it very easy to swap between different uh, crops. 
the last thing that I want to talk about row units is his downforce, the downforce system. And so again, there's a variety of ways of doing this. Uh, historically, there were springs um, or airbags. Um, and now most planters have hydraulic downforce, uh, specifically for massive use precision planting is delta force. We want to make sure that row unit is, um, the, the opener discs are getting to the right depth, um, no matter where you're on the field. And so the downforce <coughs> will, will push down more or less on the row unit so that, so that you do achieve that uh, desired depth. This system can also lift up on the row unit. So if you hit some really soft soil, it will actually pick up on the row unit. So again, you're uh, not uh, compacting the, the soil around the seed. So that's probably one of the biggest uh, return on your investment is, is a good uh, delta or good downforce system, especially uh, delta force. So we're on a different planter um, that has some of the components removed. So for example, like we talked about the flexibility. So this and this customer specifically wanted a different type of gauge wheel, so we didn't didn't have it installed. But it gives us a good access point to the actual other components. So these are the opener discs, or the yeah, opener discs that we talked about. So there's two of them. That's what's creating that, that furrow for the seed to fall into. There's also scrapers. So this is making sure that there's no dirt or buildup on the, the disc so that we can continue to make a good clean furrow. Like I said, these are the gauge wheel arms. This is what the gauge wheels will bolt to. And, and just we can get a very, little, little better, <coughs> closer cl look at the um, residue system. So we have these guards, but this is what you kind of see is a lot of teeth, this is what's cutting up the, the clods and the residue and moving that away. This silver component is called a treader wheel. This is also kind of like a depth control. So this prevents the, the actual uh, cleaning wheel uh, teeth to get too deep in the soil. So a few times I mentioned the seed tube. Again, it's kind of hard to see on a complete planter here, but that's the seed tubes right here. So that's where the seed will, will drop down from the meter and drop right into the, the furrow that's created by the opening discs. Another common thing you'll see on planters is a fertilizer tank and system. So again, a lot of farmers will, will decide to put on fertilizer uh, while they're planting, either starter fertilizer to give that, that initial seed a little bit of extra energy or some other products to help the, the plant grow uh, along its whole cycle. So with, if, if, if a farmer's putting um, fertilizer on while planting, sometimes they'll have tanks on a tractor or they'll pull a tank behind the planter, but often they have tanks on the planter. So for example, this is a 500 gallon tank up above here, uh, above me. And so that'd be a common thing we'll see in a lot of planters. The fertilizer product then from the tank is, is pumped then of course to each row unit to be uh, applied. One way we do that is a ground drive pump. So this tire, this, it rides on the, the planter main tires. And so this will spin and then pump that, that product to each row unit. There's a variety of ways that product can get from the tank to the row unit. Again, a ground drive pump or again, electric or hydraulic driven, driven pump. Okay, so as we kind of wrap up, we want to talk about a few other key components on a planter. So, I talked about vacuum. Again, this is what the vacuum that's pulling the seat on, onto the disc and the meter. But here's your vacuum motors right here. And then these are kind of your vacuum tubes. Typically for a lot of your vacuum electric, a lot of your current planters and technology, you have a lot of electrical draw. And so a lot of planters will come with the, have an alternator, hydraulically driven alternator. This is Precision Planning's PDM, which is a power distribution module. So this is kind of allowed where a lot of the electrical and, and can, your network and your electrical connections uh, kind of come together and then before going to the tractor. We've seen throughout all this planters a lot of also a lot of hydraulic demand. And so one thing cool about Massey Ferguson planters specifically is we still offer PTO pumps. So an adapter would be placed on here and then that's what would go on your PTO shaft on a tractor. And that really reduces the amount of uh, hydraulic uh, pump capacity a tractor would have to have or the number of remotes. So it removes some of that uh, hydraulic demand on a tractor, again, allowing the farmer to uh, use this planter with a much broader range of tractors. And then this is a PTO cooler. So again, this is helping cool the hydraulic oil. And then lastly, we're kind of at the, the hitch, the, begin, the, the connection point for a tractor. And so what you'll see is this is a two point hitch. So a tractor typically has a three point hitch. It uses two the bottom two links. So again, that's the tractor would connect here. We also have a draw bar hitch option. A lot of planters do where again, that would hook to the a single pin uh, draw bar on a, on a tractor. And these again are all your hydraulic hoses that would also connect to a tractor. One other item I wanted to mention that wasn't on the, the planter we were looking at earlier are markers. And before GPS, every planter had a marker because the marker, when it's fully stretched out, is a half a width of a planter. And it creates a little mark in the dirt that the tr farmer would then uh, center with the tractor and drive, uh, drive along for the next pass. So again, it allows the farmer to correctly space each planter pass. Um, nowadays, farmers uh, still use markers a lot for f when they're initially doing the first round around the field um, or in places maybe where GPS signal is um, not as strong. But again, it's becoming something that is not as commonly found on planters. Thanks for joining us in Kansas. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can make sure to be notified when the next one comes out. We'll be talking about stackable planters in Nebraska.